Yo, what is up you guys and welcome to another video. My name is Benji and this is week number 26 of investing with the Robinhood app. If you guys are new here, this is my dividend stock portfolio that's currently valued as of today, as of the moment, the market hours are still going on, so that's why it's changing. Just over $70,000, and my portfolio is made up of around 50 to 60 different companies that all have a few things in common. All of these companies do pay dividends, or they did pay dividends at one time when I did invest into them. Uh, due to the current circumstances, a few of these companies did cut uh, or suspend their dividends. Um, as of recently, but when I invested in all these companies, they all did pay a dividend every single month or every single quarter, depending on the company's dividend payouts frequency, as well as all these companies, in my opinion, do have the potential to go up in price over time. What I mean by that is take JP Morgan, for example, if JP Morgan is at $98.40 right now and I want to invest in it, it's under the belief that JP Morgan will go up to say $120, $130, $140 over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years or plus. By investing into numerous different companies in all different kinds of sectors over the long term, uh, my portfolio outlook is probably around 10, 20, 30 years. I'm currently 27 years old, so I'm looking to hold on to these stocks for a very long time and just continually add more shares of the stocks that I really prefer. Um, of course, on red days when I can get into more shares at a better price. But by doing so and having the stocks all pay me dividends along the way through this journey, as well as have the prices increase over time, I'm looking for this portfolio to be hopefully in the multi-millions of dollars over the next, you know, say 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Today we have a super cool video plan. We're gonna go over where the market is at as of today. I wanna show you guys all the new stocks that I actually purchased over the last few days, as well as today, of course. I also want to point out some of my favorite dividend stocks as of this moment. Obviously, there's too much to choose from, but I want to point out a few of them and let you guys know why. We're also going to take a peek at all my dividends that have been paid out as of recently. There is a new one that has been paid out as of recently, guys, and it's absolutely huge. So I really am excited to show you guys which company that is. And finally, I want to go over some questions slash comments at the end of the video. You guys sent in some stuff on my Instagram. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, follow me at Benji, of course as well as some awesome comments and questions that were left on my last video. If you guys ever do have any questions or comments, make sure to comment them down below. I'll make sure to get back to you. All right, so for starters, where the market is at currently as of today. So the Dow Jones is down just over 2% as of right now. We have a little bit over an hour left of trading time in today's market hours. The market in general and most of the stocks that I was looking to add more shares in today, I would call it as kind of a soft red day. The stocks are down in price, they're down in percentage, but they're not down that much to make any sort of significant moves perhaps. But even still, as always, I did want to go ahead and buy some more shares of different companies uh, that I did see some value in as of today. And now for where the portfolio is sitting at currently, we're just over $70,200 as of right now. We're actually down 2.57% as of right now or as of today over the last week. We are actually up $1,845, up 2.7%. Throughout the last month, we are up $3,674, 5.5% and some change. The last three months, we are down $15,590 and some change. And then, and then for the last year, today being the 26th week of investing with the Robinhood app, I mean, I guess that's kind of halfway through the year so. Uh, it's pretty cool. I guess it's a pretty cool milestone. So, so for the last year, we are down $14,678, down a total of 17.29%. So since last video, I did make a few more purchases. I did add a few more shares into the portfolio. Nothing too crazy. I haven't jumped on any sort of crazy opportunity because I just feel like it's still so uncertain where things are going to go next. It's so uncertain if things are going to dip, you know, well below where they are or maybe shoot way up. So for now, now I'm just reading the market. I'm filling things out. And in the meantime, I'm just buying a few shares here, there when I do find value. So on April 9th, I bought one more share at 3M at 146.64. These are all just dollar cost averaging. I already own shares of all these different companies. I just buy more shares um, of the companies when the prices are down to get an overall better average price for the companies. Next, I bought five more shares of store capital at $20.27 a piece. Next, I bought one share of Dominion Energy at $82.26. Then I bought two more shares of AT&T at $30.86. And then today, I bought two shares of Coca-Cola at $47.01. I bought one more share of JP Morgan at $99.25. I then bought three more shares of JP Morgan at $99.09. And then I bought one share of Altria at 4012 and three more shares of AT&T at 2995. As we talked about in previous videos and as you guys have maybe noticed from my previous purchases, I've been really sticking to just a few stocks for most of my buying through this uh, market turmoil. One of my favorite stocks in my entire portfolio is definitely Realty Income Corporation. 
Realty income is one that I just keep buying more and more shares of. It's still uncertain to know where the market is going to go next, but at this price point, I am still just buying a few shares here and there. I really would love to see realty income drop below $50. Again, I feel like that'd be a ton of value at under $50 per share. But in the meantime, I'll probably still buy a few more shares of realty income here and there. The dividend for the monthly paying dividend stock realty income currently is at 4.93%, which is great dividend yield. And with 26 years of dividend growth, I'm pretty certain that realty income should continue to pay their dividend through whatever market turmoil we see in the near slash long-term future, at least relatively speaking, hopefully. Another one of my all-time favorites, AT&T, is still trading down pretty low, in my opinion, well below um, you know, what it's going to be at within the next few years. Currently trading around $30, whether the price does go up or down, this is another one that I'll be continuing to add more shares in my portfolio. This is a stock that I would love to have make up a good portion of my overall portfolio, you know, in the short term and long term future. With AT&T's massive dividend yield at 6.77% and 35 years dividend growth, I would say, again, this one, um, in my opinion, is relatively a safe dividend. I think they're going to continue to pay it out. AT&T has a lot of revenue coming in from a lot of different business models, even through this whole market turmoil. So I'm hoping that AT&T can hang in there. I'm hoping that the dividend can keep being paid out. And this is another one I'll continue to invest in for a long time. Another one of my favorites in my overall portfolio that I really am looking to add a lot more shares of in the short term future here is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, in my opinion, is a pretty safe bet for a long-term investor like myself because with a 3.35% dividend yield, which is pretty decent, it's not the highest, but it's not that bad in my opinion, and a super, super long term of dividend growth, I think this one you hold on to for a long time, you get paid out the safe dividend along the way, and then the price goes up maybe, you know, say, back to the 52-week high that we previously had, which is just over 60 bucks, or maybe even higher in the short term or long term future. Another one of my favorites in my portfolio right now is Starbucks. I bought a bunch of shares at Starbucks right around this area. I got a bunch of my shares in just over $60, so it's really hard for me to want to add more shares in my position right now uh, because I wouldn't be dollar cost average. I'd be adding a higher premium to my average cost per share, but Starbucks is one that I really wish I would have jumped on more, and if there is an opportunity in the near-term future, I will definitely jump on more shares of Starbucks. Another one of my favorites in my portfolio currently is JP Morgan. JP Morgan trading at just under $100 right now is down quite a bit from the 52 week high at the price that it's at the dividend yield currently being a 3.5% with a relatively low payout ratio which means that they have more enough cash on hand to keep paying out their dividend in the foreseeable future. JP Morgan is another one that will keep dollar cost averaging in my portfolio um, and I think that the price that it's at I think that for a long term investor there's a ton of upside for it. And another one of my favorites in my portfolio that I'm holding right now is Disney. Although all of Disney's parks are closed right now due to the circumstances, I think that the price that Disney's at right now per share is still super undervalued. I could see Disney going right back up to the 52 week high. Once everything opens up and settles out, obviously, it's probably not going to happen automatically. But if you're a long term investor like myself, I think that Disney does have a lot of price increase um, in the longer term future for sure. With the price that it's at currently, the dividend yield isn't all that great. I mean, this is not a dividend to really get too excited about, but it's one of those where if you hold on to a bunch of shares of the stock, you get paid out the dividend. That's, you know, very safe in my opinion, as well as then have the price go up over time. If you're ever looking to sell out of it later down the line, there's definitely some opportunity there, or there might be. All right, and next, you guys, of course, let's take a look at all the dividends that are pending currently to my account, and I'll also show you all the dividends that were paid out to me as of recently. So we have one from British American Tobacco for $2.69. This one looks like it'll be paid out May 18th, so not too bad of a dividend. The next one, a new company that I just started holding as of recently, General Dynamics, just for one share. This is $1.10. That's going to be paid out May 7th. Then on May 8th, we have a $3.44 payout for eight shares from American Express. And then we have one of the biggest dividends, if not the biggest dividend payout I've ever received in this portfolio. Super exciting. An AT&T payout for 125 shares for $65. That is super exciting to me. That has to be the biggest dividend that I've been paid out yet. I mean, unless I'm forgetting something, but that's, I think, way more than I've ever been paid out in this portfolio. So that's super cool. It makes me just want to invest more in at t It's just an awesome company. I will continue to invest literally almost every single day unless the prices, you know, shoot up on at t But I'm going to keep adding more shares in at t long term. I cannot wait until I have a thousand shares of AT&T and then so on and so forth. Then we have a pretty big one coming soon from JP Morgan, 1440 for 16 shares. Then April 30th, Altria, $5.04. Cisco, $10.44. Cleveland Cliffs, 12 cents. Realty Income, another big one, another one that I'm holding a lot of shares of, 104 shares, 24, 23. And keep in mind, this is a monthly paid one. So I'm getting paid... 24 23 per month off of 104 shares another fairly big one epr properties 33 shares 12 dollars 62 cents 
Stake Industrial, three bucks. Starwood Property Trust, six dollars and seventy-two cents. Uh, Store Capital, five twenty-five. Main Street Capital, five thirty-three. And Global Super Dividend REIT, sixty-five cents per month. And then a quick look at the dividends that have already been paid out to me uh, as far as last week and then a little bit before then. So that's where things are at right now, you guys. I'm pretty happy with the way things are going. I am really hoping for a little bit steeper of a red day in the market. Maybe this week we can get lucky to gobble up some more shares of the companies that I'm really looking to you know, gather a lot more shares of. Overall, as far as dividends, I'm also happy with the way those are going. The payout from at t is just super exciting because it really shows the power of what happens after you get a lot of shares of a company that does pay out uh, you know, a decent dividend, if that. And just getting a huge payout like that is super exciting because I just know that over time, we're going to keep adding shares to this portfolio. And hopefully, over time, a $65 payout will be on the low side of what we're getting paid out from a company. Um, you know, Hopefully, because over time, we'll have so many shares of so many different companies. But it's really exciting to see. Right when that money gets paid to me, it just goes right into my cash balance, which then I just invest into more shares and more of these different companies. I'm not pulling any money out of this portfolio for a long, long time. I'm going to continue to add thousands and thousands a week to this portfolio. My goal still stands. I want to get this portfolio to right around $200,000 worth of value uh, before the end of this year. So let's make it happen, you guys. And thank you guys for sticking along the journey as of this far. All right, you guys, and now to answer some of your questions, comments, etc. These are from my Instagram. Every so often, I'll post something on my Instagram story saying like, you know, ask me a question, send me a question, I'll post it on my YouTube channel. So I did that last week, and I think, so I got a few questions from you guys, and I'll answer them right now. Again, if you guys aren't following me on Instagram, and you guys want to follow along my more so daily life, not just investing, obviously, just like normal stuff, it's at Benji. So make sure to give me a follow. So the first question comment is specifically, what videos, books helped you start learning about trading? So the answer to this is just around a year ago, I think I got sort of interested in trading. I really wanted to start making my money work for me. I was sick of just putting my money into like high yield savings accounts and like CDs and stuff. I was really trying to, you know, find different ways that I can help grow the money that I have a little bit faster, hopefully. I came across YouTubers like Ricky and Joseph and other YouTubers that talk about stock trading as well as dividend investing. From there, I basically just went down a rabbit hole, finding a ton of different YouTubers that talk about dividend investing slash just stocks in general and started to learn sort of the basics. And at that point, I figured, all right, I think I'm ready to do this with the, my real money. So I went ahead and opened up my own uh, Robinhood portfolio shortly after that. And that's kind of where we are now. I didn't read any specific books or anything, but um, I did, uh, in fact, just use YouTube to learn most of what I learned. All right, the next question is, you into Forex? So the answer to this one would be no, I'm not into Forex trading. I'm not really into cryptocurrency trading or anything other than the stock markets. Back in around 2015, 2016, I did dive into cryptocurrency a little bit, and I did spend maybe $10,000 on different cryptocurrency, which I think in all, I probably profited like five, $6,000 just trading it and selling out of it for the most part. So. Right now, I still own a little bit of cryptocurrency, but it's not really my thing. The next question is, why don't you have more Bitcoin in your portfolio? The answer to this one is pretty much what I said in the last question. I got into Bitcoin and Litecoin and all these different types of things back in like 2014, 15, 16, I want to say. I don't really remember exactly. Maybe it was even a little before then, but I kind of got into it. I went through the little phase of being obsessed with cryptocurrency for a few months, and I didn't really find it that amusing, honestly. It's just not really my thing, so... That's probably why I don't really have that much cryptocurrency at this point. All right, the next question is, what dream did you have when you were a child? So for this one, I think they're asking, like, what did I dream of becoming when I was a child or something? But I guess I'll answer this the best I can. I, I always wanted to be in business. I always wanted to run my own businesses ever since I was a super young kid. I made videos about this on my YouTube channel before, you guys. If you guys have seen my other business journey videos on my channel, not to do with the stock market or dividend investing. But I just wanted to be a businessman. I always wanted to work for myself. Luckily enough, um, right around when I was 20 years old, I had a, my first business really take off and allow me to do so. And since then, I've started many more businesses and etc. So I guess that's kind of been my dream. And luckily enough, I'm sort of living it, I guess you could say. The next one is hope you're safe and healthy. Thank you so much. I hope all of you guys that are watching this are safe and healthy. I know that we're going through some really rough times right now. And some are probably going through much rougher than others. I definitely know that for a fact. So... Try to use this time and be as productive as you guys can any way that you can. And I know for me, a certain businesses of mine right now are basically completely shut down because of the situation going on. And I'm trying to just look on the bright side of things. I'm trying to, you know, get as pumped up as I can about when things open back up and just dive in twice as deep on those businesses. So just trying to stay motivated and just know that it could always be worse. All right, the next one is, wow, someone who is actually sharing portfolio with us. Thanks. Most YouTubers just brag about how much they bought a stock but never show us. 
So this one is pretty interesting. This one kind of hit home to me because as you guys are watching this video right now, I still do watch a lot of YouTubers. Uh, believe it or not, I love watching YouTube. That's pretty much all I, all the content I consume for the most part. I'm not really into TV all that much or anything else. So I agree. And the thing with YouTube and the overall internet is I'm in the same boat. I really hate when people show you something but don't explain how they got to that point or what's really going on, etc. The best comparison I can make to this that I thought of off the top of my head was when you watch a show like Shark Tank, which is a great show on CNBC. Um, it's basically people go on the show and try to raise money for their business or their service, etc. I always got so annoyed when I was like a kid watching Shark Tank back when I was like, I don't know, 14, 15 years old or something. I came across Shark Tank and I was watching with my parents or something. And it was just always so annoying because people would be on there and they'd be talking about their business and how they want to start their business. But then all of a sudden they would say, well, you know... I had $250,000 to start this business and they never go into how did you get that money? Like it didn't just come from nowhere. Did you go out and raise it, you know, through venture capital? Did you get it from a family member? Did you take out credit cards? It doesn't matter. I'm not going to judge you for however you got to that point, but it's really fun and it's really nice to see a transparent um, journey from start to finish. So so I definitely respect that comment and also feel that way. I really want to be transparent to you guys. I want to show you guys my entire portfolio, tell you guys exactly what I'm doing, like I always say, why I'm doing it, and just really just go through the whole process with you guys. I'm more so trying to document over creating content on this uh, YouTube channel. All right, guys, and last comment for this video, I opened a Robin account mid-March and started investing into stocks. I had never bought a stock before and figured it was a good time to get in. Just wanted to say I dig your videos and will try to use similar techniques. My portfolio is a little munchkin compared to yours, but I'm learning. Yo, Kalen, congrats on starting your portfolio and just know that even if your portfolio is small, you're taking action, you're getting started, you're learning, etc. So over time, it will grow. Hopefully my techniques work, but I will say that I'm no expert over here. I'm just doing my best. So again, thank you. Well, all right, you guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you guys did like this video, please, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe, you guys. We have a lot more videos coming throughout this next week. And make sure to comment any questions or comments you guys have down below. I want to start doing that after every single uh, topic of every video. Just answer or talk about some things that you guys have on your mind. It could be stock market related. It could be just business related or whatever you guys want to know. So I appreciate you guys all for watching. I'll see you in the next video.